As somebody else said to me the other day, it's like, oh, I can't make anything. It's like, can you make a cake? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> then you can make something. And if you were to define maker uh, with a capital M, mm. what would the definition be for you? Hello everyone, I'm David, I'm the manager of FabLab Adelaide. In my uh, opinion and experience really through FabLab, I think maker is everyone. You might be like knitting, crochet, embroidery, jewellery design, fashion design. My name is Shane Hattie, I study industrial design in Adelaide. I was born here. I study industrial design because in the booklet it said, be a toy designer. I'm like, that sounds pretty <laughs> rad. So this is where we get to the whole idea of what's a maker. My name's Angela. Um, I'm Belinda. I'm Chandler. I'm Jodie. My name's Catherine. Hello. We're going to be in unison. <laughs> uh, hello, Marina and Kelly. I'm Sue. Well, I'm Susan and uh, I, in another life, I used to be a maker. In terms of being a maker, I wouldn't apply that to myself. I don't really make anything. I don't cook. Um, I'm not just into making, I guess. But um, I did make two children. I consider myself a collector, but without um, a maker's objects and the beautiful objects that makers make, my collection wouldn't exist. In the past, I wouldn't have thought of myself as a maker, although I make things. I do scrapbooking, but more the card making side of it. I wouldn't call myself a maker. I don't think that I'm overly creative. Because I make things, but I'll copy them from other things, so it's not like they did something. I made it, mm. but it's just coloured by numbers. Because I think the maker community really, in part, has grown up because of this idea of open source that some of you may be familiar with. This, this, this realisation in the last five years or so of the benefits of actually sharing this is amazing and not being so concerned about. Patents and copyright and the like. I mean, the, the maker community, I think, has grown in, in a big way because of the, the emergence of the printing technology. Um, it's kind of been the backbone. It's now becoming a lot easier to make more complex things in different materials and what have you at home. So you can actually concentrate on what you're making and rather rather about how you make it. I um, find the definition of maker very broad. It's creating anything, whether it's something on paper, in your mind, something physical. I think a maker for me is anyone that creates. I think it's the sharing of ideas and the layering and everything that goes along with the making. It's about those feelings of excitement, anticipation, those light bulb moments and aha, uh -huh, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I feel like I am a maker because I'm actually putting something into production that someone will see. I find it fascinating to see the end product, you know, product of um, my creative imagination. Right now, I'm going to go from... So I keep moving, can't stop, won't stop grooving. students are just go, just do it, just do it, just do it. And I agree, and I think it's a confidence thing, like me saying, I what, am a maker now, but I wasn't. I think I've always been a maker, but I just didn't have the confidence to see myself in that way. So I'm sure it's a practice thing. You've got to practice these skills. It's not what they come naturally. Do you want to tell me what you've made? Shake it up. Well, only know when we know.